Six Ring Supplies. Today we're doing a very quick short video on how to coil split a four conductor wire pickup using these little beauties, the CGS push pull pots um, that are electronically exactly the same as your classic push pull pot of course but they're, li they're laid out a bit differently um, so a lot of people do send us emails uh, every week about how to use these pots properly. Um, basically in short these six nibs here that are numbered four c2 three i know this is upside down um these six nibs are identical to the the classic six solder points on a normal push pull pot um but on these cts pots they're designed onto a, a print like a printed circuit board so they're actually linked to these solder holes so on a normal diagram if you'd have to put it into the top left nib here it's number four so in this setup you put it into the hole labeled four and so on. Um, I work on these pots every single day of the week pretty much so for me it, it's, it's, it's habit, I find it quite easy um, and when I do on the very rare occasion that I work on a, an old or classic style push ball pot I struggle, it takes me a while to get used to it. So anyway the equipment we're using uh, same as always, got the, the soldering station uh, some silver solder, soldering tip cleaner and just to demonstrate it, I've set up this uh, little rig here, very simple, it's a volume pot straight to the jack socket, um, push-pull obviously. So the, the the wire to the jack is braided wire, so we've grounded that to the side, we've put the hot input to the output lug, the middle one there of the, of the pot, and we're just going to hook up the pickup uh, and test the coil split. So the pickup we're using, Seymour Duncan, I don't actually know what model it is, just got it off the bay recently. Um, it's a bridge pickup though, but uh, the essential to be able to coil split is you need four conductor wires like here. Um, so you've got your red, your green, your black, your white, and the bare one is always the ground. Now the problem with these kind of pickups is every single pickup manufacturer in the world that I know of, I'm sure there's an exception, uses the same four colours, black, red, green, white, and bare, or naked. Um, now the confusion happens because whilst every manufacturer pretty much uses the same colours, they all use them in a different order. So for example, on a Seymour Duncan like this, the black wire is the hot output you know that's the one that you solder to this one here when you're on a standard volume control but for a gibson it's the other way around and it's the red which is the hot output wire the hot signal um so it does cause a lot of confusion i'm going to be using seymour duncan today because they're they're generally quite common pickups uh most people would have come across or used them at some point uh so i'm just going to go ahead now uh, attach the pickup, show you how it's attached, and then we'll plug it into an amp, just the little rig into an amp, and test the test the coil split. Okay, so for normal operation, if you're just putting this into a standard Les Paul or a Les Paul Junior, or to any guitar that's got one standard volume control, you don't you're not looking for any fancy switching or coil splitting. What you'd normally do is the red and the white. which is the north finish and south finish wires. They get twisted twisted together and taped off or soldered, preferably soldered, then taped off. Your black wire, like I say, is the hot signal. So that's the one that goes connected to the volume control. And your green wire, which is the south star, gets grounded <clears throat> along with the ground wire to the side of the pot casing. I will probably put it somewhere along here. But for coil splitting, it's a little bit different. So actually, I say different, not much is going to change. So the black wire is going to go to the input of the volume control as normal. Nothing changes there. The green and the ground, they're going to get grounded. So we're going to put them just here. 
to the sides of the pot casing. And the red and the white, they're again going to be twisted together. But they are going to go into this hole here. So it's C2. You'd normally put it here, we're going to put it into C2. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach that and then we'll test it out. Right, so the pickup's all hooked up. I'll just give you a close-up view of what's happened. I'll just zoom in a little bit. So, the red and the white, which is to be the north and south finish, have been soldered together into the whole C2, or on a classic C2, uh, classic push-ball pot. This knob here, nib, the middle one at the top. On the left, the hot signal wire, which is the black in this case, has gone into the input of the volume control. And the green and the ground have gone to ground just on the side of the pot casing there. Now, however, you'll see there's a wire here. That's because to complete the coil split, you do need to have the common, common route to ground on the actual switch itself so I've put it on this hole here which is number three which is the bottom left that's gone to ground as well so you'll actually see some diagrams that will have the green and the ground wire going into that hole which you can of course do that but the other way to do it is just to connect that to ground and then put everything onto the ground so that's how it's all set up I'm just gonna bring the amp over plug it in and we'll do a little test Okay, so I've got my little rig here plugged into an amp. It's your classic teenage amp. It's got the uh, insane setting on, but we won't be using that for this purpose. Um, right, so obviously there's no real ground connection here. Now these are all grounded together. The jack's grounded to the pot, the pot's grounded to the pickup, but there's no common route to ground uh, as there would or should be when it's put inside a guitar but it will do for the job at hand. So I turn on the amp. Now this is the push-pull box in down position, so it should play just like a normal volume. Um, and I'm just taking something metallic and you can hear that both coils, as expected, are switched on. Now if we pull the push-pull up, So that coil's on, and the screw coil, even though you can hear something a little bit there, that's because there's no common route to ground, the, the screw coil is the one that's been grounded with the yellow wire there. And there's the red and the white wires. Still on. So there you are guys, that's a very simple video on how to coil split a Seymour Duncan using the fancy push pull pots which a lot of people do have issues with um, there's actually very little difference between how you'd wire it into a normal guitar without the push pull but you're just making sure that the green and the red wire, uh, the white excuse me the white and the red wires are the ones going into C2 to be split and you need to make sure you ground the screw coil which is that one there now if you were if you wanted to ground this coil and keep that one active, you swap the wires over. Okay, so thanks for, thanks for watching guys. Any questions or comments, uh, don't hesitate to get in touch and we'll see you next time.